Today we're going to unbox, set up and review the Elgato low profile boom arm and I'll explain why I think it's the best high end arm on the market over the Blue Compass, Gator Frameworks and the Rode PSA1. This may very well be the first product reviewed at Gamer Heaven with zero cons, shortcomings or areas of improvement. Probably not, but let's drop it low and find out. I'm gonna get this out of the way. I absolutely love the Blue Compass. I've been using it for about four years. I switched over to a Gator Frameworks for about six or seven months and then right back to a Blue Compass. And I have used the Rode PSA1. I think it has a fantastic rugged design, awesome warranty reputation and customer support. However, I'm not a fan of the aesthetics or cosmetic appearance of it. If you're not careful, you can get your finger skin pinched and crease points. And that boom arm has a tendency to spring back up with a microphone off it and slap you in the chin. Granted, most boom arms with good tension will do that. However, I've heard a lot of stories of the Rode PSA one hitting people with the old one two how do you do so if you're a psa one owner let that be a disclaimer to you make sure you have a hand on it before you take off your heavy ass microphone like your rode pod mic or sure sm7b because that arm is under tension it's going to spring back up on you those three boom arms have been kind of the flagships and main competitors of each other for the longest time and recently elgato who is owned by corsair released two high quality flagship boom arms one is a more standard design and then there's also the low profile or lp which is on a swivel mechanism and is meant to get low underneath things like monitors. Now, for me personally, the primary reason for getting away from the Blue Compass or any traditional boom arm that I have tested, such as the Gator Frameworks or Rode PSA1, and going towards this specific low profile mount is because of this backdrop right here with the controllers, and then I have this secondary camera view right here showing a wide angle view of my entire room. Usually my dog is in here sleeping somewhere on the floor right around here, but she's currently off having some adventures, I guess. With my previous boom arm, the Blue Compass, which I do have a couple complaints, which I will mention in just a second, that is a typical standard traditional boom arm design and all of those are going to be in the way of this awesome backdrop or controller wall which I've spent a lot of time energy and money creating so I wanted a low profile boom arm that can keep my microphone down low to where all you see is the cone of my Shure SM7B or you can push it down and have it not seen at all so you hear high quality audio but you don't know where the microphone is that's cool so that was the sole or only reason for me picking up this boom arm but I am glad to report to all of you that there are several pros or benefits that I have no Notice using this boom arm over all other models I've got my greasy gamer mitts on, even my favorite previously, the Blue Compass. As of the packaging of all Elgato slash Mama Bear Corsair products that I have unboxed and tested on this channel, including expensive flagship electronic devices, were packaged very basically, padded very minimally, so I have no doubt that this relatively inexpensive chunk of metal is going to be the same thing. Yep. Lo and behold, very basic instruction pamphlet or brochure, but hey, it's a boom arm. You clamp it to your desk, you put the mic near your suckle, you run your XLR cable through this cable tube, and you should be good to go. You do have a small paper baggie that says get connected with the Elgato logo, which will come with an Allen key and a couple of standard adapters for shock mounts. As for the build quality, it is an all metal design. It does swivel incredibly smooth and easily. These adjustment levers are plastic. However, they don't feel cheap and chintzy. You do have a standard quarter inch thread mount on the top with an adjustable ring. And then you have these magnetized plates, which are going to keep your XLR cable tucked away nice and tidy. Now, I have heard other reviewers say that these magnets aren't the strongest thing in the world. And depending on how you move this boom arm, the XLR cable can actually cause these to pop off. And these are identical or symmetrical both ways. So you can put this in. Either way, as for the actual desk clamp itself, it does have rubberized padding on the bottom and top, so you're not going to damage your desk. And a nice feature in order to get this snug to your desk, it does have this little ratcheting mechanism to where you pull it out like that, where when you're clamped on your desk, you can still ratchet this without banging your knuckles or not being able to actually tighten this up. Let's get the trusty blue compass off the desk and get the Elgato LP boom arm mounted or firmly affixed and see how she swivels. Another thing I absolutely love, it seems like such a small thing, but it makes such a big difference. That's what she said. The standard adapter for shock mounts has this flathead cutout on both sides. Every adapter I've ever seen only has it on one side and it can be a real finicky fickle bitch if you ever have to swap microphones, shock mounts, or boom arms.
As for the cons, there really is only two. One of them's kind of major and the other one's pretty nitpicky. The major one is that whenever I go to adjust the boom arm, about 60% of the time, it will simply lift out of its frame. I'll be overlaying some B-roll right now, showing you what that debacle looks like, that little sitch. that little situation. It's kind of frustrating when you're going to adjust your microphone about a half inch up towards your suck hole and you end up standing there with two pieces of a boom arm in your hand. Well, you wouldn't be standing. You're probably sitting at your desk. You get my point. And the second one is I wish the magnets were just slightly stronger on the cableways that hide your XLR cable. They did pop off once and only once. And I have heard other reviewers say it happened frequently to them. I tried to replicate that or purposely make it pop off. And I could only get that scenario or situation to happen once. Uh, now to the pros. Well, first of all, it does its job, what it's marketed at it doing perfectly. You you can swivel this underneath a monitor, whether it's wall mounted with a vase amount or it's on a stand on your desk. Now, granted, you can't have it down super low or else your hand is going to bump into it and you're not going to be able to use your keyboard or controller overlaying some B-roll footage here showing the uncomfortable way of playing with this and then also the ideal ergonomic gaming position for keyboard and then also controller, a nice little gamepad using this low profile boom arm to where it is out of eye shot of your camera, but also out of pause way of your controller. Pros, the build quality is absolutely phenomenal. It's metal, feels sturdy. The little bits that are plastic feel like high quality plastic, not some cheap chintzy parts been special sir grabs a lot. Those cheap fittings and connectors, you're not going to find them on this thing. This is a premium flagship boom arm here and it feels like it. Speaking of which, I think $100 is a very reasonable price for a flagship boom arm like this that is directly in line with all of its competitors such as the Rode PSA1 and the Blue Compass, the Gator Frameworks as well, which I thought was, they only had one model, but apparently the one that I had tested on the channel was called the Series 3000, which is the most common you'll see in streamer setups. The next pro, and this is a big one. This holds position phenomenally well, even with a heavy microphone like a Shure SM7B or the Rode Pod mic, which is actually heavier than the SM7B, even though it's quite a bit smaller. So that was one of my major complaints with the Blue Compass is that it would actually sag down with my Shure SM7B. And part of that was because I actually had to use an extension tube to clear the port where you plug in the XLR cable into the microphone. And that is a nether pro that I do not need to use that extension arm accessory whatsoever. I can just screw the SM7B directly into the low profile boom arm granted with an adapter which is included and i am using the included adapter right now so this holds position phenomenally even with a heavy microphone but also is quite adjustable as well i don't know why i moved it up like that because you probably couldn't hear me this is a dynamic mic not a condenser got to keep it close to the suckle right there that's where she lives the next pro i love the aesthetics or cosmetic design because it does have the xlr cable ran through the inside with those cable ways much like the gator frameworks 3000 and 4000 series and the blue compass that i've been accustomed to next up the desk clamp is incredibly high quality it is rubber padded on the top and bottom, which I have seen other flagships. For example, the Rode PSA-1 is only padded on one side, so most people end up going onto Amazon to buy themselves a little stick-on rubber pad. No need for that here. And I do like the fact it has that ratchet mechanism so you can tighten it down to your desk and clear it, even if you have limited clearance around your drawers and desk. Last but not least, I love that when I'm not using it, I can swivel it out of the way. Incredibly effortlessly, you just swivel the sucker out of the way. As we're with a traditional boom arm design that isn't on a swivel mechanism, it basically hits hinges at the middle, but doesn't fully swivel. That's a stupid way of describing that or explaining that. It is not a traditional scissor boom arm. It is a swivel mechanism. Okay, bam, there we go. So why this boom arm, considering the Blue Compass, Rode PSA-1, Gator Frameworks 3000 series, and other Elgato model, the standard or not low profile model, all retail for $100. Granted, they do fluctuate in price on Amazon a little bit, but that's their recommended retail is the $100 range. If you have $100 hairs, you can pick up one of these. Well, the Rode PSA-1, I think, is the least handsome out of the bunch by a large margin. You can also pinch your fingers inside of those clamping points, the little creases, you know? There's not padding on the top and bottom of the desk clamp. As for the Gator Frameworks, it has limited range of motion or mobility in the head or near the actual microphone. And it has a stupid design where it has a built-in XLR cable pre-routed in through the boom arm that cannot be removed. So if that XLR cable were to go bad, you need to buy a new boom arm. Also, I find the Gator Frameworks to not be a very good looking boom arm, less so than the Compass or the Elgato offerings. Now, how about the Blue Compass? That's been my daily driver for four years. Years. Well, it's very hard to find an exact sweet spot in clamping pressure by adjusting the three tightening levers. Over time, it sags down because it does not have the strength or resistance to hold a strong microphone, especially when you have something like an extension tube. It's offset. The weight is leveraged over here. Does that make sense? The, the boom arm has to work more. Not to mention with the blue compass, I actually had one break on me. Luckily, I was able to get a replacement, but it took several weeks. And while the ratchet mechanism to clamp onto your desk is good, I don't like it quite as good as Elgato's solution, which brings us to the Elgato 
Elgato Low Profile that we tested here today, which covers all of those bases that I mentioned earlier. Plus, it can do something that none of the competitors can do. By the fact that it's not a scissor mechanism, it is a swivel mechanism. It can slide underneath monitors, or maybe you have a camera mounted on your desk or some lights. It can swivel around all that and get right to your lip pillows. And if you're creating content that isn't something like a podcast that is only going to be heard but not seen, maybe you're creating videos, people are going to see you and you don't want to have a huge boom arm taken up. I don't know, 15% of your screen. Not to mention another perk is for gamers, since this is out of my peripherals, this isn't distracting me during gameplay whatsoever. I'm not thinking about, oh shit, there's a huge boom arm and a massive condenser microphone peeking me in the face. Meanwhile, I've got opponents peeking me down the field. It's not good. How about a warranty? Good, good question. Let's find out right now. It appears to carry the same warranty as all other Elgato products, which is a two-year limited. What What is it limited to? That you didn't thrash it yourself. You haven't been skiing with this thing. You didn't attach fishing wire to it and make a makeshift mace or flail out of it. That it broke of natural causes. So the verdict is that this is a badass boom arm. If you can describe a boom arm as badass, this, this would be it. This is the Clint Eastwood of boom arms. Quick the dead and the Elgato. I think this is a phenomenal buy for 100 US dollars. This is my new daily driver for this setup. However, the Blue Compass, which is a phenomenal boom arm, and like I mentioned, I've been using it for four years, is going to find a new home in the room that away, which is the beachy themed guest room, which I am building a second stream capable PC area in there. So if I ever want to change up the backdrop or scenery around here and give you guys a little beachy theme, we can just go in that room. And the Blue Compass will be clamped onto that desk in there, which is a bamboo standing desk. This is a phenomenal boom arm. It is linked in the description below. And I do also want to test the standard or I guess high profile, if you want to call it that, the other Elgato boom arm that launched with the low profile. Drop in the comment section below what boom arm you are using, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes most of the time. Peace.